so nice to come home to You'd be so nice by the fire While the breeze on high sang along busy for my taste. <laughs> I'm sure Andy will like it, though. I mean, now, you just stand over there and you watch how I handle things. Whatever okay? you say, Mr. Liberace. Hey, Lee. Hi. How are you? My golly, that's a great looking outfit. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> hey, why don't you come on in for some milk and cookies and then you can tell me the name of your tailor. Why, is he in some kind of danger? <laughs> Come on in. Clang, 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 like a trolley. Ding, 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 like a bell. Sing, 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 like my heart strings. From the moment I saw him, all I fell. Chug, 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 went the motor. Bump, 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 went the brain. When she smiled, I could feel the car shake. Got any last-minute instructions for me, Duke? Yeah, I have. Listen to me good, kid. Listen to me good. I want to do... <laughs> <laughs> Because I want you should throw the fire. Pardon me, Duke. Unless you're very young indeed, you'll have recognized Liberace, Judy Garland, and Woody Allen. But the icing on the cake was Andy Williams himself. Let's find out how he's doing now as we go by satellite to his own Moon River Theater in Branson, Missouri, and say, Can you hear me, Andy Williams? I can. I can hear you very well. Andy, some of the guests on your show were such enormous names. How did you persuade them to come on? Uh, some of those names, like Woody Allen, wasn't that big when he came on the show. I mean, he was, he was well known, but he wasn't, uh, you know, the great movie director that he has become known to be. And, and, and didn't Elton John make his first American appearance on your show? Um, it's funny, because um, I had never heard of Elton John. He hadn't had a record in America. And my agent, and his name is Jerry Parencio, he said, you've got to do me a favor and put this uh, young English guy on. His name is Elton John. He's got a new record out called Your Song. And I said, listen, Terry, we really need uh, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans or Cary Grant or Judy Garland, somebody, you know, of that kind of name value because we need, we're fighting for ratings here. He said, please, do me a favor. Anyway, he finally convinced me to put Elton on the show. Um, by the time our show came on the air, he was already a hit. So it was a terrific booking. In the, in the 1960s, you were often voted best dressed man. What was your secret? Money, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could actually buy those things if you wanted. You know, for $1,000, you, you could be considered the best dressed man uh, in television. It was harder in the 70s, wasn't it? Because fashions were so weird. Did you have any big fashion disasters in the 70s? Uh, well, I didn't have any disasters. I didn't think then. But looking back on them, they were, I thought they were disasters. You know, when you. When you look, b look back at yourself when you're 40 years old and you've got bell-bottom trousers on and hip-huggers and great big belts and long sideburns and trying to look like Elvis Presley, uh, you know, it looks kind of silly. <laughs> and I, I always thought, you know, that there are people like Cary Grant who never went with those... I never saw Cary Grant in bell-bottom. How did you get started in show business? My father started a singing. There were four brothers, uh, first in the church choir, um, and we started on WHO in Des Moines, and then eventually we moved to California. And who gave you your first really big break? Uh, well, with my brothers, it was Bing Crosby. When we first moved out to California, Bing had just finished a movie called Going My Way. 
And in the movie, he sang a song called Swingin' on a Star. And he used a, a, a boys' choir, a Catholic boys' choir. And when they went to make the, the record, for some reason, uh, we were called in and sang it for Bing, and he loved it, and uh, started us off thinking that we were going to be big stars right away. Um, actually, we got paid $25 a piece for the record. Sold, I don't know how many million. Big record. Well, the, the big uh, singing group in the next generation was the Osmonds, and you gave them their first big break, didn't you? Yes, I did. My father uh, saw them. They were the exact same ages that my brothers and I were when we first started singing on, on WHO in Des Moines. And he came and brought them into the studio one day. And so they were on, and, and they were so wonderful and funny. The, um, I don't know whether you remember any of this, but the, the first time they were on the show, Jay was the youngest. Donnie hadn't joined the group yet, and he had some teeth missing in the front. And I don't know whether he was told to look at the camera with the red light on or whether he just did it on his own, but everybody, all the rest, the other three sang straight out to the audience, and every time the camera would change lights, he would smile and turn and look at the camera with the light on. Then it was really funny. <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons that, uh, that they were so, such a big hit on the show that time, was because of that one, one thing. And then we asked them to come back the next week. And I never had a contract with them, and they became sort of like part of my family. Um, and they stayed on the show for about six or seven years. Did you have any idea they would become so big? <laughs> no. They were just used on the show in any way that, that uh, we needed them. And they just, and then one day I said to them, why don't you, uh, have you ever thought of, of learning how to play instruments? They said, yeah, yes, sir. And they ran out and they got some instruments. <laughs> um, Donnie, I think, was, had joined the group by then, and he was playing the piano. But within six months, I'm telling you, they were incredible. You built your own theater there in Branson. Oh, I'm, I'm sneaking up on you here, but w we've got some footage of you in one of your shows in the theater, and it uh, has particular reference to your best-dressed man image. Yeah, let's take a look at this. That's got to be a bigger fashion disaster than the bell bottoms. <laughs> Actually, you're quite fetching in high I, heels. I mean, it's... <laughs> no, I think I'm pretty ugly. I don't think there's any way that you can make a man look good in a dress, but... Uh... <laughs> you must have sung Moon River a thousand times. Is it still fresh to you? A million times. Yeah, I love the, I love the song. It's so beautifully written, and I love to hear it. Uh, Andy, it, it's a kind of impertinent, but I wonder if I could ask you to just sing us a couple of bars of Moon River, just for my personal satisfaction. Moon, well, maybe, uh, <laughs> Moon River, wider than a mile. A little early in the morning for Moon River. <laughs> <laughs> My dream has just come true. Thank you very much, Andy Williams. Well, Clive, come over and see us. Please do. Andy Williams has given so much to the world, we can forgive him for giving us the Osmonds. Here's that moment Andy told us about, and he was right. They were sensational. Squeeze in here close, and I'm going to go out and sit in the audience with the folks. And you just go ahead and sing something. Hi. We're the Osmond Brothers Boys Quartet, and we're all tuned up to go. So to try back, enjoy your stay. Let me spend my happy hours Roving with you amongst the flowers And when we get where no one else can see Just you and me Honeybee, my little baby bumble <laughs> I'll be 
I give her all my love That's all I do And if you saw my love 